Welcome to the series on African tribes where I attempt to present facts about the various tribes of Africa. On one of my recent expeditions on the web, I came across a group that hardly anybody talks or knows about, especially here in Kenya. They speak Somali, their culture is Somali, they are mostly Muslim, they listen to Somali music and are Somali in every facet of life, but are not genetically ethnic Somali. These are the Bantu Somalis. Their story is truly sad and tragic. Their history and the present reality in Somali made me weep for them, for it is full of misfortune. To be treated differently just because of hair texture and other superficial physical features is quite unfortunate. Yet these people have endured through it all with a steady resilience. Here are 10 facts about the Bantu Somalis you probably didn't know about. Number 1. The Bantu Somalis are an ethnic group from Somalia, largely from the Shebele and the Juba river valleys in the southwestern part of the country. They are descendants of many Bantu ethnic groups, primarily from the niger Congo region of Africa, brought to Somalia in the 19th century by Arab slave traders, and these people endured centuries of oppression in the Horn of Africa as agricultural laborers. Number 2. Somali Bantu are primarily Muslim in their belief and practices. Women cover their arms and legs and wear the hijab in the presence of unrelated males at home and this reflects the values of modesty and purity. Number 3. Somali Bantu families often claimed membership in three of Somalia's five major clans, Darud, Rahanwain, and Hawiye clans. The objective behind these efforts to integrate within the ethnic Somali clan system were to seek protection and alliances to further their collective interests. Number 4. During the civil war in Somalia, Somali Bantus were one of the most vulnerable groups and suffered horribly at the hands of clan militias and criminal gangs. Many have left Somalia. The number of Somali Bantu inhabitants in Somalia before the civil war is thought to have been about 80,000, with the most concentrated between the Juba and Shabele rivers in the south. However, Recent estimates place their figure as high as 900,000 persons. Number 5. Most can speak Somali, in particular the Afmei dialect, as well as the Bantu languages of Zigwa and Mashunguli. <laughs> لكن مال ما رمضان ك لصور لفي أد أي وجبنا دحين أد كنتن إلا واحد كثير صبت أو كان ترى حواي بيري قبل كا أو بين لفين. Number six, unlike ethnic Somalis, most of whom are traditionally nomadic herders, Bantus are mainly sedentary subsistence farmers. Number seven, the Somali Bantus are much more diverse than commonly presumed. Some had arrived thousands of years ago as migratory farmers and as the first people predating the Somali expansion into southern Somalia. There is another group that consists of individuals brought as slaves during the Arab slave trade. These are the descendants of Bantu ethnic groups found in South and East Africa, including Tanzania, Mozambique, and Malawi.
all told, there has been a very little commingling between Bantus and Somalis. Formal intermarriage is extremely rare and typically results in ostracism in the few times it does occur. Number 9. Prior to the United States agreement to accommodate Bantu Somalis from Somalia, attempts were made to resettle the refugees to their ancestral homes in Tanzania and Mozambique, the two countries they regard as their ancestral home. Both countries initially refused to accommodate them, citing the burden of accommodating such a huge number of people. Eventually though, some were repatriated to Tanzania where they were given lands and granted citizenship. In 2003, the first Bantu immigrants began to arrive in US cities and by 2007, around 13,000 had been resettled in cities throughout the United States, mostly in Atlanta, Columbus, Salt Lake City and Pittsburgh. Lastly, number 10, several Bantus in the USA, Europe and Australia still dream of returning to Somalia to reclaim their properties which they lost to the war. They still call Somalia home despite the marginalization. As a marginalized group, the Bantu lack true representation in politics and access to government services, educational opportunities and professional positions in the private sector. Thank you for your patience, hope you learned something today. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. See you around. Thank you.